Alright, hello everyone. Today we're going to be doing the tutorial on how to get started making a mod for Slime Rancher 1. In this tutorial, uh, in this episode, I am mainly just going to go over starting a project and making your first ident, your first ID. Of course, there's this great tutorial by Frosty. I'll put it in the description, which goes over most of the things I'll be covering today. We will also be using the library mod known as SSRML or Simple SR Mod Library. And I guess we just need to begin. Of course, this is a great thing to look over in description. First of all, you should probably look at the things that are at the top of here, which is to install Visual Studio and look at this tutorial on the on how to do C sharp program in C sharp if you don't know already. Of course, you also should already have installed SRML, or SRML, and you will need to install SSRML as well, which I will both have both linked in the description. So let's begin. Assuming you've already done all the installation steps, we will now just open up Visual Studio 2019. Um, I suggest uh, if you don't have the .NET 4.8 framework to install it, But I do, so I can click 4.8. A lot of newer mods use this, while in the, in the Frosty's tutorial, it shows using 4.7.2. Anyway, we can call this mod whatever we want for this. I'm going to call this the SR, uh, SR1 tutorial. So it looks good for me. Now I'm going to create. And this is how we're, this makes us a project. A lot of, you may call this file class one or main. A lot of newer mods call this main, but in the tutorial it suggests the name um, of class one with C-L-A-S-1 instead of the two S's. So we have all of this now. How do we, we need to first start with probably adding our references. I already have a bunch here, but we're going to go browse to find them and see if I can remember them. You may later on get these publicized assemblies and honest, and I will be using one for this. But if you don't have the publicized assemblies, you will just use this right here. So you can get assembly C sharp publicized. I also have a RSM. SRML publicized here. If you don't have SRML publicized, you can get it right here. And if you want to publicize, get the publicized versions, you need to uh, probably go to the Discord, which I will also have linked in the description for it. They can be very useful and give you certain useful mods as well that I will be showing. Um, next, we're going to need to get Unity. There's a lot of different Unity engines, and as we go along, we're going to get multiple, but for now, we'll just get the regular Unity engine. And finally, we're going to have to get the library mod that I'm using. Of course, what you're going to do is you're going to go to SRML. It should be in your mods folder. You're going to go down. You're going to find it. Um, it will be called Simple SR Mod Library, and you're going to add that as well. And later on, you may be using other ones of these. Another one that's very important and useful to have is the Harmony, uh, which will help you if you ever need to cause something to run before or after and change certain things with functions already in the game. It should be in here. Or maybe it's not in here, and I've forgotten where Harmony is at. Is Harmony not in there? Um... I don't know where else Harmony would be. Maybe I'm, am I silly? Am I being goofy and can't find it? Uh, if it's not here, then it's probably in here. Let me find it here. It's zero Harmony. So here should be everything you need to make for now. We will be getting more Unity Engine modules later on. Uh, one that's very useful is the physics module. I'll go ahead and add it. You can find it in that folder as well. And the core module is also useful. So now we will go, and we may be getting this one later, because, and later on if we ever wanted to use asset bundles, but for this we won't be. 
now that we have all of our references, we can start here. So to begin, we're probably we're going to need to say that we are using SRML. And we won't be using simple SR mod library yet. For this example, I'm going to just go ahead and create another public class, which will be the one for our IDs. I'm going to call this public class IDs. I will be honest with you, I've already forgotten everything that you need. I believe that you put um, NM holder, which uh, means I'm probably missing the reference. Using this, we will also need this. This is also going to be, uh, <laughs> I have to go remember which one. So let's go reference this. I forgot what, I don't have to write this much because once you write one of these projects, you tend to just kind of copy stuff from your old projects. So oh yes, it is mod entry point. That's what I thought it was. Entry point, uh, mod entry point, there we go. Next, we're going to need the load functions. I don't believe is there something special to them yet. Yeah, it's an override function. So it is public override void preload. Shouldn't need this. And but we will need um the, I don't remember what the exact line was, so we'll not mess with that yet. Public override void load and we won't need the function known as there's another function called the post load but we won't be using that that's for running things that will be happening after load but for this case we don't need it i'm going to be making an id and we're also going to be doing this you may call this uh, modded ids or something as well but for now we're just going to call it ids so this is all we need in this file for now Next, we're going to go here and click add new item. And normally you'd be adding a class file for programs, but we're going to actually need a text file. Uh, where's text file? I have to go find it, don't I? Um, text file. And this will be a JSON text file. So make sure you put .json at the end. And it's going to be called mod info.json. And this is going to be what you need to make sure that your mod is recognized by the game. Now, let me go remember what all of the uh, requirements for a mod info file is. Here it is. Mainly because I haven't used, I don't normally have to again write through all of this, so I don't remember all the details. So the idea is what ideal we in. This should ideally be all lowercase with no spaces. Um, uh, if you put uppercase characters, it won't error, but it, it will always recognize it as the lowercase version. So it kind of automatically makes it a lowercase. We're going to be calling this um, sr sr one tutorial and we'll be calling this the sr and this is the actual name that will show up this is the sr one tutorial i make it like this it looks nicer author name is whatever author name you're going to go by i will go by zion arts here and for whatever user author you want to go by probably should keep this roughly the same for all of your mods so that people know it's still you but it can be whatever you want. Version number is what version of the mod it is. You can update this every time you make an update version of the mod. For now, we'll just have it at 1.0. And this is a description you can find in game. We're going to call, say, this mod was made for a tutorial for SR1 mods. There we go. That should work. Now, now that we have this, we're going to go back to our main file. And we're going to actually create our first you see, the problem with making ideas is that there's a very long string of characters needed to make one. And to be honest, I don't remember it. So instead of trying to remember it, we're going to kind of cheat a little bit. There's an Apache. All right, here. So we're going to this public static read only 
dig in it. I'll give a little breakdown of what this means. We should probably make our it's a static class. Static in C sharp, if you don't know, means that you don't have to create an instance of this. You don't have to set a new version of this object or anything to reference its functions or something like that. So what we're going to call this, we're going to set this up to be, this is the name, it should be all uppercase, and this is going to be our slime for next episode. We're going to call this the crazy cool underscore slime, crazy cool slime. And you might later get warnings about these. Right now, it doesn't seem to show up any warnings. And this is also the type of enum. An enum is, or maybe it's enum, I don't know, uh, is a lot of different things fall under this. There's zones, there's PDIDs, there's regular identifiable IDs. A lot of things fall under this. It's just a type of object that normally identifies something inside of Slime Rancher. In this example, we're doing an identifiable ID, but later you might have other types of IDs that you're going to be using. So we have crazy cool slime, and this should all be good and working. Now, we'll probably get an error for this, or rather a message in the SRML logs talking about how this is null. That's because we haven't set a object to the slime. We haven't made our slime yet. Rather, we've just made its ID, so it's going to complain about it. Um... So if we go back over here, uh, let's go back to getting started. I'm going to quickly go find where the patch harmonies is. Harmony instance patch all. Okay, so it was the harmony instance. And this essentially means if you ever in the future create harmony patches, this will load all of your patches. So it's just nice to have this here. For now, we don't need to do that. And this looks like it should be good. So let's go ahead and do this. I do run a code analysis and build this way. There are other ways of doing it, of course, but this is the way I developed because of certain issues I've had in the past. Now that you've rebuilt on your build of your mod, we're going to go to our repository or wherever you put your mod file. And we're going to go um, do, 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 do. Gotta go find it. Tutorial mod? Is this it? No, that's not what we called it. SR1 tutorial. There it is. Then we're going to go here. So go into it, the mod. We go to the folder called the mod. We go to the bin folder. We go to debug. And we will find that our mod is right here. Now we're going to open up our mods folder, which I have right here. A few mods that you might want to install in the future is a mod called the Unity Explorer. If you go to um, the Discord, you can ask for the Unity Explorer mod as well as more commands, or rather even more commands. Both of those are very useful mods that you might want in the future. So we're going to install this. Cool. There it is. Now we're going to go to Steam. We're going to run Slime Rancher and we'll play. And if all things go well, it should load without error. If it loads with an error or it doesn't load in, then we have a problem. We have to go check. Actually, this will have a problem because we forgot a very important step. So let me go ahead and quit Slime Rancher. And we're going to go fix that problem. You want to know what we did? See this? This file needs to have its output set. Um, it's not saying. There it is. Build action. Its build action needs to be set to embedded resource. These will always be compiled. If you have a resource, it's going to be called embedded resource. And I kind of forgot to do that. Are you going to close or are you broken? Let's go ahead. You stop. It's fine. Um, I'm going to go here. We're going to build this again. I'm going to code analysis and build and suppress active issues. So after that little uh, thing. Once again, put this in here, replace, and we're going to go back to Steam and we're going to run this again. This might take a while. I have a lot of mods installed. Ideally, you'll have less mods installed. It might be a little quicker. So we can wait. And once this works, This is 
loads. Uh, wait, program to respond. Maybe we have an issue. Let's go check that. Uh, we go to here, just any file explorer. We're going to open a new file explorer. You're going to go to your user. Oh, never mind. Did it work? Yep, it worked. This is Unity Explorer. If you ever want to know. So now we're just going to go to mods. And we're going to go down. And SR1 tutorial right here. Cool, that's it for this tutorial. You can also add dependencies. I didn't learn how to do this because this was added after I started modding and I never figured out how it worked. But you can add dependencies. You can also tell it to load before or after certain mods if you ever need to. Or maybe it's just before or after. I don't remember which one. Anyway, there we go. That's just all we're gonna be doing for this tutorial. I hope this was useful. And that's all I have for you today. Bye.